Welcome to the Love Them Knives channel, LTK here, and we have some shocking news. <laughs> shocking news. Yes, take a look at this. This is a Reich knife. Can you believe it? Looks like a Reich knife, except there's G10 on here. G10 backspacer, G10 scale. What's going on? Is it M390? Nope. It's not. And it's the Reich 801G. It is 154CM. It has a lockout, so you can engage that, and then you cannot disengage the lock bar all the way. And you can see the lock bar is uh, about 25%. To 30 percent somewhere in there you can disengage this little gem here it's not i mean it's just a, this slides forward pretty easy sliding it back takes a little bit of intention which is probably a good thing because you don't want to accidentally just disengage this if you wanted it engaged to begin with lock bar insert yes over travel stop yes Interesting, huh? So now they're making budget knives. Well, as budget as right gets, correct? So titanium frame lock, but G10 front scale and backspacer integrated for a lanyard hole, jimping on the flipper tab, jimping on the top of the blade here three and three quarter inch blade eight and three quarter overall good size knife it's that pretty standard reich kind of look to it isn't it the design and for size comparison the paramilitary two fancies out here and now nah, we're bigger than that but she's eight and a quarter this is eight and three eighths so uh, eight and three quarters so a half inch overall not a whole whole lot bigger and if we switch the aspect ratio you'll see that that now the reich is starting to not look quite so huge of course five inch handle on uh the pm2 which is a good size, big old long handle, even though it's about 3.4, 3.45 inch blade. And depending on where you measure, you can call it 3.5. So, yeah, girl, time to go. You're just there for the show. Manix. Manix is a little smaller than the PM2, so here's your aspect ratio on here the comparison of the sizes check it out manny bye bye buddy bartha you're on stage and you know let's just get the actual stats here so if you lay a ruler down at the base of this knife you're going to go well back to the flipper tab here we're four inch blade uh up to the closest point on the bolster is three and three quarter overall eight and three quarter at least maybe a sixteenth over that so you're over 22 centimeters not but not 22 and a half good size knife huh so 96 97 millimeters somewhere in there on the blade blade stock Blade stock. What do you think? Boy, that's four millimeters all day long. Where did I get you? Let me look around the camera real quick. Get it on a flat spot. Here we go. So, yeah, that should be right at four millimeters, 0.159. And it is right at four millimeters. And come here, Calipeter. Um, so, we got for handle thickness, and it's 0.54 of an inch. 13.8 millimeters so it's not super thick 
but it's not super thin either like the PM2 is about 0 0.46 0 0.47 this is 0 0.53 so it's a lot uh, it's substantially thicker the action is really good uh, let me show you if you would prefer uh, picture <clears throat> took it apart and of course here's your G10 scale the underside of your G10 scale here's the titanium frame part and the G10 backspacer so here's your hardened steel insert on the lock bar of course you have uh, steel washers to interface and there's a steel washer under here as well to interface with these bearings which are ceramic and the detent ball ceramic there's your little lock bar thing which you can see how that uh, when that lock bar is engaged how this slides in behind and keeps that over travel stop from being able to to back off and uh, you know disengage the the blade yeah no magic there blade stop up here pretty simple um, blade HQ has these for sale for $135 which is you know, if you look at the Wii knives and their G10 and their D2 instead of 154CM and their G10 total, I mean, they're not, there's not a titanium frame on them. They're at $118. So you want to spend another $18 to have a titanium frame and to have 154CM, you have that choice. Uh, whether that's, you know, whether you want to do that or not. It's the 801GS, obviously, and this pouch here says 801 G S for stripe and it does have a stripe there uh, otherwise they come in uh, a black and then you can get them in an orange too but I got the stripe because it was more variated it was just a little bit of a of a change up okay quaking style flat grind uh, gray finish Drop point, and there's your stats on there. Pause and read. Color black slash blue. I guess they're in 4.22 ounces. We'll check that out here in a second. Um, and then a safety lock, that kind of thing. Frame lock, Quake, and made in China, of course, because Reich is a Chinese knife company. And yeah, I got this, and it does give you a little bit of kind of a grayish, bluish, I guess. So, and this is a tan thing, a tan brown type color, and you can see that's carried in here too. So, you get kind of a, a blackish or black, then kind of a blue gray, and then kind of this tan. So, it does bring those colors together. I like that better than just going straight black or just a, just a monochrome orange. So this is what I got. Easy to take apart, put back together, not a problem. The action's pretty good. You know, it drops really good. Of course, I took it apart, wiped it down, put a little nano lube, put it back together, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was good right out of the pouch. Comes in a pouch, not in a box. Okay, this, so this is this is it, folks. What do you think? So this is the outer bag that the pouch went in. Okay. And then I think this is, oh yeah, this is the inner uh, sleeve for the knife. I just stuck it in this. And <clears throat> you get a microfiber cloth. Uh, you don't need any tools because these are just standard uh, torques. And the knife goes in here after you go in that sleeve, blah, blah, blah. And then the whole thing goes in this outer bag. And that's it. There's no boxes. Uh, I haven't had a Reich box yet. I wouldn't know what one looked like. But no. 
Negatory there. Good looking knife though. You know, and the one thing about it, I guess, is that, you know, most of the other Reich knives are in the mid twos, you know, 225 to end up. And especially their integrals are, God, four or $500. So this at 135 retail is not bad. You have a, a choil here on the front for sharpening. Can't really go forward with your fingers that way. But, you know, of course, ergos are good on here. You got this front choil for your fingers. Kind of the second one goes in behind that. Uh, yeah, it feels good. And if we had a piece of paper around here, we could see if this thing will cut anything. Yeah. Pretty sharp right out of the box. I like these. I, you know, I mean, it just depends. If you like the Reich knives and then you think, well, gosh, dang it. I don't know if I want to do 250 or whatever to put that design in my hand. Then maybe this is a thought. The $135 g10 and there's some advantages to this and the advantage i see basically is and i you know i love titanium as much as the next guy does but you know you this one falls on the floor and slides a little bit nothing i mean this g10 is hail and hardy stuff uh so snail trails on this and this looks like this might be fairly resistant to, you know, just incidental snail trails. You might have to actually really get something in solid contact with that. Don't know if, you know, how I feel about the this, this lock. Uh, okay, I guess if you're thinking about the fact that this knife, because of the price and because of the G10, this might be a real user for somebody. And in that case... You know, having that lockout, an extra safety measure, okay. Uh, I get that. And, you know, some of the rake knives have that as well. So they either have it on the spine or uh, if it's a stainless model, sometimes they'll put it down here and it'll be a, a slide for the lock kind of up here closer to the lock bar. But, yeah, this is interesting. And... What does it weigh? Well, we told you. But we'll just confirm the weight here. And we're going to go grams. So 120 grams. And we'll go back all through all the units. Two ounces. 4.24. So it's not real heavy. It's not like five, five and a half, six ounces. So this is pretty EDCable, especially considering it's almost nine inches. Eight and three quarter. It's a good size knife. That's a pretty long blade. Really from tip to back in here is four inches. Up here, three and three quarter. Four millimeter blade stock. That's pretty thick. Piercing? Not a problem. Slicing? Yeah, you can do that too. The grind's pretty high and flat. Easy to disassemble. How many screws do you have along here? None. So you got the pivot and you got the screw in the back. And you got it apart. Backspacer. Should we spend some time on that? I'm always, you know, I start looking at my, my videos and it's like, I do this and then I go to this. And you don't see the backspacer. I keep going like this. It's like, dude, roll it the other way. So here you go. From this aspect ratio. 
and it's a contoured, if you can see, contoured scale here and on the back as well. There's machining and some, I guess, meaningful traction along here, along the uh, titanium scales, as you can see. And then there's uh, some, I guess, jimping or texturing along this lock bar. And the pass-through is pretty easy to actuate. There's, there's, you know, there's texturing here, 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 and all along here. And yes, that's meaningful. So, yeah, it's made to, to give you pretty good traction. It's made uh, to be much more affordable than a lot of their knives. And I believe more scratch resistant and durable. So a worker knife? Yeah, I think so. What do you think, Flanagan? Oh, you're always laying down on the job. So, yeah, I like it. I think it's a great option. I'm kind of glad Wright came out with this. <sighs> As opposed to just kind of, I don't know. They don't, to me, Wright doesn't have the name that we knives do or the name that like Riot or even Kaiser uh, probably not as universally bought and talked about, but they're they're good knives. They're good quality. I mean, they're right there with them. It's just that, um, I don't know. I, I I just don't see them out there um, in the marketplace as much, talked about as much. And uh, you know, when I was talking to. Uh, one of my buddies the other day that's a viewer on this channel is like, uh, you know, they're for no more name recognition than they have. They're pretty proud of their knives. The pricing is pretty substantial. Uh, you know, I guess, I mean, but in the mid twos, there's a lot of stuff in the mid twos that, I mean, if you like the Reich, then it's good. And if you don't, then I guess you can pass on it. But I think doing this was a good move on their part. You know, you don't have to have M390, 154 CM, some G10, knock a hundred and some dollars off and uh, get it into the price range of some other people that would feel a little bit more comfortable. And also, you can you can put this in their pocket. This can be just a a nice carry knife that's somewhere between, you know, proud and just worker. Uh, but proud carry to worker carry, and it can work. And it does work. Maybe a few other options on scale color, but the stripe, the black, the orange, I guess for now. Maybe an OD green, although this is kind of enough to kind of satisfy, I think, a lot of people. Uh, this color here kind of hits your tans. A little bit of grays, blues, blacks, and that coated blade. Mm, how's that going to hold up? Don't know. Um, good question. Satin, stone wash. That might be a thought. So uh, we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I think it's a great option for those of you that like the Reich knife uh, design. Interested in putting one in your hands. Never had one and... And uh, for a much lesser price, can can do that just to check it out. And you know what? Yeah, the action's really good on this. Detent is... Oh, stand back, Flanny. Okay, we can do that. Oh, it scarred my stuff. Um, yeah, it's... it's it's a five, five and a half, right in there with the rake, the real steel, you know, that kind of stuff. But with ceramic bearings, that's where you want it. I mean, I don't think you want it any harder than that. That's enough. That's enough. And that's just enough to 
I mean, once you break it loose, it's hard to fail this knife. So that's all that really matters. It's a good, um, it's not snappy. It's somewhere between swing and gate and snappy. I almost uh, actuated that with my finger. I'm worried about maybe accidentally sliding that forward when it's closed. Hmm. In any case, so yeah. But yeah, it's good action. Medium detent. Not real strong. Not weak, but not real strong. I think it's just where it needs to be. All right. Get out of here. Come on, Flan. Thank you so much for your 20 and a half minutes of time. I'm sure you probably clicked out in the first five. <laughs> we can do anything right now. Can't we, Flanagan? Nobody's watching. All right. Take care. Subscribe if you'd like. Keep up on our table sales, Trader's Corner, all that kind of good stuff. You know what we do around here. What do we do around here? We love them knives, so stay sharp.